Welcome to this session of one of the learning methods. But before I introduce you to this method, I would like you to look at this story and try to understand it. A story goes like this, a father left 17 camels as an asset for his three sons and he made a will and died. In the will, he gave half of 17 to eldest son, one third to the middle son and one ninth to the youngest son. Are you getting what is the problem here? Exactly, son were puzzled. They could not calculate with odd number of 17. So what they did, they went to a wise man and asked that wise man, please help us distribute camels. Wise man thought over it, analyzed the situation and then he gave one solution to these three people that satisfied them very much. What he did, he added one of his own camel to those 17 camels and distributed according to the will of their father. Are you getting what we are trying to do? We are incorporating some kind of problem in our learning process and that is what is our method today that is problem based learning. Let us see what is problem based learning. We are so familiar with the term problem. We come across many a times one or many problems in our life. How do we solve it? Sometimes we give up, but sometimes we take it as a challenge and then we go through a particular process. But what is the nature of the problem? Let us see. If you look at this particular figure, we will find out that problem is not that easy. It requires some kind of reasoning, some kind of analysis of the problem as the wise man had done. It is ill structured. Why? Because problem is never made. It happens. So, problem always leaves some kind of challenge to you and that challenge will motivate the person to solve that. That challenge will arouse curiosity in that person to resolve that problem. If it does not happen, the problem never gets resolved. So, that is why problem is a very complex in nature and it has got embedded objectives because that objective will take you to the resolution of problem. Then what is problem based learning? Let us look at some of these definitions. There is a quote by Woods that says, learning begins with the problem when presented in the same context as it would be encountered in real world. According to me, it means that you start learning as soon as you encounter the problem. What is that problem? That problem always arises from the real world, where you are staying, where you are living. This definition by Burroughs says, PBL is learning that results from the process of working together towards the understanding of the process of resolution of a problem. Now, if you understand this definition well, you will find that PBL not only involves learning of the content, learning of the problem, but it also involves learning of the process of resolving this problem. Another definition says, it is an instructional method that challenges students to learn to learn as they work cooperatively in groups to seek solutions to real world problem. Now, if you look at those two terms, learn to learn and working cooperatively, it means it is talking about the complex nature of the problem, wherein only one mind will not be sufficient. You need to have multiple perspectives for that. And for this reason, you need to have a group of people together who will brainstorm on the problem and try to resolve it. 
these definitions give us lot many characteristics that make this method as problem based learning method. The very first characteristic of PBL is that it follows constructivist approach. What is constructivist approach? It is nothing but constructing new knowledge based on the old or previous knowledge by working on the learning material provided to the learner. Now, if you understand what I say, it means that the students are independent, they learn on their own, they find their own direction in learning. So, all other characteristics are coming out from this very first characteristic that says learning in small groups, student centered, active learning, self directed learning. Further, it says self governing learning. What do we mean by self governing? You have your own rules and regulations because you are working in groups. Now, when you work in groups, you need to have many, many requirements to possess. Now, when you work in groups, you need to have some qualities that you must showcase when you are interacting with each other. Here, the teacher is a facilitator of learning. What do you mean by that? Teacher is not teaching teacher is not telling the student that you should do this way, you should go that way, the problem is this. Teacher will make them understand what is the problem and then leave students on their own. So, whenever students require some kind of information or something to guide them, she is always there. She will provide them with some learning material, that much is her job. But that job is also very important. If you look at the last characteristics that says PBL is a curriculum, it also says that it is a process. What does that mean? PBL makes engaging curriculum for the students because the students are involved in designing the curriculum. For example, if the problem is given to them, they will design their own strategies how to solve, they will make their own assumptions, then they will decide how to go about that problem towards the solution. So, that is why PBL is also a curriculum by itself. It is a process also, it is a process of learning how to resolve the problem, it is a process of learning the content that is used as a reference for solving the problem. Like any other instructional method, PBL also follows certain procedure and certain stages. Let us have a look at them. There are six steps. The first one is presentation of the problem, exploring the nature causes and other aspects of the problem, independent studies, working together on the problem, discussion on the solution and review of the process. Let us go one by one. At a very first stage, the teacher is active. Her role is to define the problem, present the problem. The problem can be presented in different ways. It can be as I have shown you a story. It can be in a story form. It can be in a simple PowerPoint presentation form. It can be some kind of anecdote, anything, narrative form, anything the teacher can use. Once the problem is presented, her job is not done she has to make sure that there is a mutual and consensual understanding about every term of the problem. Certain terms can have more than one meanings. The student may think it in that direction. If it happens, then there will be misdirection for one student and other direction for another student. So, that is why it is very essential for the teacher to clarify each and every significant terms that will take them to a single direction. That is what the teacher is expecting. Now, from the second stage onward, the control goes in the hands of the students. The students in small groups, not more than five to six, they start working on the problem. They first try to understand the problem, discuss about the problem and explore what can be the real thing that we have to focus 
and once this is done, they make their own assumptions. How this problem can be solved? Making assumptions, we always hear this in researches in the form of hypothesis. So, same kind of thing the students will do, not realizing that they are doing something like research at higher level. So, it is kind of exploring what can be done, exploring about the strategies. So, as I said that PBL can be a curriculum, that is where they have started designing this curriculum. So, this stage is designing of the curriculum and also designing of the process that they will have to follow. In this discussion, the students may identify certain issues that they feel that need to be taken care of and those issues also should be discussed in depth, analyzed in depth and that would give them the direction to go further. The third stage that will come will be independent study. As you see, it is a mixture of group work as well as independent work. Now, if you know what is cooperative learning, wherein every learner learns every bit of content, you must be wondering, so far there is no content that has come across. You are right, because here the content is used as a periphery of the problem. So, problem is focused here and that is why we call this method as problem based learning. So, while resolving the problem, the learners will learn about the content. Let us see how this stage they are coming across with this content, what the teacher has provided to them. As per the role and work and responsibility assigned to each student from the group, they start working on that in this stage. They will start collecting data. Now, what is that collecting data? When this is a learning situation, they will learn about the content. They will gather the content from the library, maybe they will talk to the teacher or any concerned person or maybe they will have to visit the places. So, here they will be working independently to accomplish the tasks that each student has been given by the group. So, this stage is very crucial wherein every learner learns about the content in relation with the problem. Again, all the students come together in their respective groups. They assess the situation, they share their views, they share what they have collected, what they have learned. So, in the group, what one student has learned independently, other will come to know through sharing. So, this is where one person from the group will learn every aspect of the content. They try to test the assumptions which they had made earlier and if they feel that they are going in a right direction, they will proceed further. But if they feel that somewhere something is wrong, we are not getting the solution, they can make new assumptions and then they will further go back to the same process of exploring and working independently. However, in this stage only they will find out the solution. They will finalize the solution through brainstorming. Whatever the students have gathered, whatever the solution they have come across, those will be discussed, analyzed and the solutions which every student has found out will be brainstormed and then final solutions will be accepted and kept ready for further discussion in the large group setup. This is the stage where the learner will come in touch with the content and will be able to associate content with the problem and the content becomes the focus at this stage wherein the teacher will explain, clarify the terms, highlights, whatever the students have not understood. After that, teacher will test their content. The content evaluation becomes easy for the learners because they have learned the content indirectly in the light of the problem. The last stage is about reflection. Now, students will come together and they will reflect upon how they solved the problem. What was the process that they followed? 
each group might have followed different process. That is why I said PBL is the curriculum. So, they have designed their own curriculum and they have followed that process and came to the solution. So, that reflection helps all the learners and it enhances their understanding about the process of resolving the problem. Association of the content with the problem helps such content to become more applicable for the students. So, now as you have learnt about the entire process of PBL, let us just do the recap, find out what are the stages, presentation of the problem, exploring the nature causes and other aspects of the problem, independent study, working together on the problem, discussion on the solution, review of the process. So, PBL is the combination of group work as well as independent study. It is this combination that makes learning meaningful, interesting for the students. There are two terms that we always use for problem related learning. One is problem based learning that we have learned and another one is problem solving method. What is the difference between the two? Surely, there is significant difference between the two. Let us see what it is. As I mentioned earlier, problem based method is focused on the process, but problem solving is not the process, it is the end product, wherein in problem solving, the learner learns about the content first and then based on the knowledge of the content, will try to solve the problem which is given at the end of the learning. So, it will be kind of evaluation for the students to solve the problem based on what they have learnt. But for problem based learning, as you all know that learning starts with the problem. This learning goes on till the end of the problem. As you have seen the last stage wherein the reflection takes place, that is also a learning process. What type of learners you will select for this kind of method? All types, provided you see required skills or required elements, they always showcase when they are interacting with each other. What are the skills that are required for successful completion of learning through PBL? Let us see. Teamwork, listening skill, cooperation, tolerance, respect for peers' views, critical evaluation. These are the social skills that necessarily should be seen in all the students. The student who cannot tolerate other people's viewpoints, other students' viewpoints and will say that he does not understand anything, that will not work. Every learner has to respect every viewpoint of other students. Then only this method can work. This is cooperative learning. This kind of cooperation has to be kept in mind by all. Another skill that is required is analytical skill. Analyzing the problem, analyzing the literature they will be reading as a reference to resolve the problem and also reflecting upon what they are doing and what they have done. For this, you require this skill that will make this learning more effective. What will be the role of the teacher here? As I said, she is the facilitator. Facilitator is a comprehensive term that encompasses many more sub roles as guide, as director, as counselor and also as friend because the students are free to learn as they want to learn and they want to approach the teacher anytime when they feel that somewhere we require teacher's expertise. So, the teacher's role is passive but very important. So, today we have seen a very important learning method that makes the learner accountable for their learning and also arouses his or her curiosity in learning. I hope as teachers, you will be very often using this method for students. Thank you.